Hey, what is up, guys? Ishan here, and uh, with me, as usual, is uh, Umesh. Hey there, guys. Umesh here. How is it going? Hope you all are good. Today on the podcast, we decided to do something that we usually do in our, our regular mundane lives, and we discuss all these amazing characters, MCU, and Kevin Feige, and Stan Lee, and all the other creators have put together. And we sit and we try to dissect these characters, try to understand where they're coming from, where they're going. and uh, it is just it's just so much fun doing it just the two of us so we thought why not sit down and discuss this on the podcast with you guys and get uh, your views on it for us to start off the MCU character analysis or the character essays as we like to call them there are obviously two choices to begin with and it was either Tony Stark or we do Captain America and uh, guess what we decided Captain America I think uh, Captain America is your favorite character as an Omesh's favorite character So oh, yeah. I think you should do the honors and talk about him and tell us what he said. And yes, Captain America, man, he he is um, honestly my favorite uh, MCU hero, my favorite Avenger. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of reasons for it. Mm-hmm. It's not one one particular reason. Okay. But uh, so to start off with, Captain America, we we'll, we'll first discuss Captain America the first Avenger. Yeah. Let me say this. So mm-hmm. Captain America is, I think, one of the most perfect characters in the MCU, and by that I mean the guy who always takes the right decisions. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I love about him because, and and a lot of people don't like that. I think they they don't like uh, these self-righteous characters. But mm-hmm. I personally love all of them, not yeah. just Captain America. <laughs> what what do you think about this this? and price this nature of captain america i think i think you know um jo russo and anthony russo in an interview um very rightfully said that uh, a, a, and i agree with them because i come from a similar place as comic book readers he's a really square character as as jo russo pointed out he's a square character and there there aren't a lot of loopholes uh, in this character and as they again i'm quoting directly anthony russo and jo russo from from this interview that they had to really work hard to make this uninteresting character interesting in the MCU so uh, i think when uh, as you said we have to discuss captain america and uh, the first avenger so i think when the when the movie came out i think it got a limited release in india first of all so um, i didn't get to see this particular film in theaters i saw captain america for the first time in the avengers so at uh, talking about the uh, righteous nature that you uh, talked about i mean yeah of course righteous characters are good you mean uh, they can give you a lot of good life lessons and codes to live by and rules of life and all those things and i think that's that's a great thing but uh, in reality what i think is for a character to be flawed like we all are we all are flawed right and for a character to be flawed it makes it more relatable for me so for me uh, for me the righteous thing is fine but you should have some flaws it it shouldn't be like you're basically jesus it shouldn't be like that we'll discuss this furthermore in 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 this podcast jo russo and anthony russo did a really great job of giving that character a layer which it very badly needed right and i i do understand completely where you're coming from i mean you know being righteous is uh, it's nearly impossible in in life like uh, if if we are talking honestly every every person is flawed everyone makes mistakes mm-hmm. everyone is selfish at times that yeah. has to be absolutely fine and yeah. it gives the character depth as well to understand that uh, it's just one of my guilty pleasures to like you know mm-hmm. these these self righteous guys who always try to do the right thing yeah. uh, no matter what so that that's a personal choice it was forced to venture by so it quite quite a long time after it was released i couldn't see it in the theaters as uh-huh. you said it was uh-huh. it, it, it was, was i don't know what the issue was at the time yeah. let us know let us know in the comments if you guys know why it got a limited release yeah i don't know it was, it was quite a long time back and i saw it afterwards mhm and uh, i i just loved the it, it was so inspiring for me mhm it's uh, this the core of him is that he is a, a two patriot like it's, it's the feeling that he represents in Captain mm-hmm. America that mm-hmm. he he just wants to serve his country yeah right and that was that was so inspiring for me so that is the first memory that i have of captain america mm-hmm. and, uh, 
even I think he just got better after that in his individual movies at least. Yeah. We can we'll talk about his role in uh, uh, Avengers. The, yeah. yeah, Avengers and everything. Mm-hmm. But I think he ju- he just grew as a character and uh, he became more complex. Uh, you know that, what? That was a, you yeah. know what? With with first Avenger, um, I mean, I happened to catch it last night itself because we decided to do this. So I went online and I saw this movie. So um, for me. Uh, watching this particular movie yesterday and so the point is that the first avenger i saw it in a very different light last night because it it really helped me understand a lot of things and a lot of reasons why uh, why steve rogers and captain america are basically two characters but um, they're supposed to be one and i'm going to be referencing some scenes here uh, hopefully you remember them so um, before his pr- procedure right uh when when she was this skinny small guy so mm-hmm. he uh, as you said righteous characters right now uh with when he when he is this scrawny little kid he wants to serve his country he, he wants to he, he is this patriotic kid and he says that people are laying lies out there and i have no right to do anything less that that's all great and all righteous but then you see a different side of him where he is basically lying uh again and again about his origins where he's from uh, just to get in the army he's lying about his past and that made me feel a little better because you know he's he's willing to do whatever it takes to get in there for me as i told you he needs to have some arc he needs to have some flaw so for me i saw that flaw for the first time and it made me feel a little comfortable around that character and now uh again again uh, i would reference a scene where he uh, where this where the scientist who who basically develops the super soldier serum i don't remember his name for the for the love of god i can't remember his name so a brilliant actor by the way and a great german accent i loved him i loved that character uh, so he says that do you want to kill nazis and he uh cap says that is this a test like am i supposed to give this perfect answer and he says yes and he gives that perfect answer uh, saying that uh, i don't like bully no matter where they are from i don't like bully but you didn't answer my question do you want to kill nazis is this a test yes i don't want to kill anyone i don't like bullies I don't care where they're from. I like it. I like that cuz he is making sure is this do you want to hear the truth or do you want to hear what you want to hear? And he gives him the right answer at the right place and for me I see that 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 thing as a character flaw and I like it. I like it. It's no way a complaint or anything but I love that thing that they had they gave that character that depth and character arc where he has some flaws at least. that's interesting i never noticed that uh-huh. you know him be trying to get into the army it, it didn't really catch my eye uh-huh. but uh, yes, i guess yes he definitely is i mean nobody's perfect and uh, we see that with the choices that he's making in the future like in the later movies uh-huh. the choices that he's making is definitely making some controversial and you can say you know flawed choices uh-huh. uh in in the first avenger i think that much is that's the only uh, depth or uh, as you said the gray area that is given to him is that right i, I don't think in the first avenger there's, there's much as right. first avenger is just be uh, just to establish him as soldier mm-hmm. for the country and mm-hmm. the character of basically the captain america yeah uh, but i i one thing i really liked about the movie is that they how the how beautiful it is just in his outfit yeah. i think they did a great job with his outfit because he's he gave a pretty good reason that he was just a showman like he was doing stage shows and mm-hmm. all which is why he said he had such a fancy outfit yeah. so i i really that, like that part about yeah. it and i think even the action scenes in the, in the first avenger are mm-hmm. uh, are not bad they they are bad like they are there are certainly not the best ones not mm-hmm. the best that mm-hmm. captain america the superhero is capable of in mm-hmm. his throughout his superhero journeys Yeah. but uh, yeah they are they are good right yeah. what what do you think i think they are too comical for me as in not funny but like uh, me uh, going back to when i read a few captain america comics you know you have these uh, pow and cram and all those noises coming in and you see enemies flying uh, east west that they captured i don't know if it was intentional or unintentional 
but i found that you know uh, probably it was a reference to comics where he punches a guy and he goes flying up in the air i guess it, it's fine but there's this there's this one uh, really interesting um scene in first uh, first avengers uh, where he, and it, it is a very parallel theme in winter soldier i, I would like to discuss that but we will we'll do that when we start discussing winter soldier i think uh, but mm-hmm. coming back to the action scenes what i think about this the entire action that was there in the film uh, they try to give out this this vibe where the experiment that they did on steve steve rogers has gone really well and he's this unstoppable force where he can do basically everything like jumping swimming running dodging bullets jumping on the cars i think that was the main uh, reason for these fight scenes to be so one sided whereas if you go to see with the soldier the fight scenes and uh, they are they are pretty balanced between the heroes and the villains they're they're very balanced like Uh, Winter Soldier is equally powerful. I think that you are right because very truly Captain America the First Avenger was mm-hmm. basically a fairy tale story. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was it was meant to be perfect in every way. I mean it's like uh, every every guy wants to every scrawny guy wants to be yeah like this yeah powerful strong uh, handsome guy, right? Yeah. So wounds flying everywhere. Yeah. and he looks so cool in the army he leaves the army i don't yeah. know where he has no he has had no training he just died yeah that's what he he has no fight training he is just doing what street fighting is and that's what i was saying that it is a fairy tale story i understand that it's it's uh, just the right and wrong is just so easily distinguished mm-hmm. like this is right this is wrong mm-hmm. our hero is uh, weak he becomes strong he fights he fights yeah. the evil that's yeah. it he that's it. he does he does the sacrifice like doesn't think about himself dies mm. for the country mm. that's it yeah that's yeah and I, i as i said i think that it, it had to be that way but the good thing about that is uh, it, it it changed in civil war uh, i'm sorry not civil war winter soldier because i think back there back back in uh, in the world war it was easy to distinguish what was right and what was wrong mm. while in the current in the current scenario it's much more complicated so it, it's a good shift yeah. in the two of the soldier yeah, yeah. Uh, and see uh, again um as we um as since we're discussing for avenger there's some key moments which i found out about last night so uh, what what i found uh, very interesting is uh, now when he is uh, he is he has always felt like out of place when he is this crony guy even with bucky he loves bucky but uh, bucky is tall and handsome and uh, fit i guess so he doesn't feel that uh, you know in place with him he loves him but he is he still feels like an outcast when he's uh, when he's interacting with him when he's out with girls he feels this you know i'm left out uh, when he joins the army finally he again feels that he is an outcast so uh, but when i think he is truly able to form this bond with with the german scientist when they when they sit down before the procedure and have this talk to the little guys <laughs> no no wait wait what i am doing no you have a procedure tomorrow no fluids uh, all right we'll drink it after no i don't have a procedure tomorrow drink it after i drink it now I think uh, that's where he really is able to form this bond with him and he gets comfortable enough to joke around with him when they close him in the incubator or whatever it's called he they close him inside and the scientist asks him are you ready he says uh, is it too late to go to the bathroom <laughs> right yeah. so he's joking around and that is a very refreshing thing for me to see that captain america steve rogers is joking around because he's always so serious there is always this drama that is going on in his mind So uh for me that was a good thing to see but then it is all taken away when that when the scientist dies even when Bucky and him are doing missions he feels that you know what this is this, this is my posse now this is my group but then Bucky dies yeah as can he is isolated so he has always had this, in the first avengers i like that they they kept putting him together and breaking him putting him together and breaking him the movie did a lot more than it gets credit for uh but then the movie is not without its flaws it has a lot of flaws uh, a character that like bucky should have been more devastating if you remember guardians of the galaxy 2 you see yondu's death and the way peter quill reacts to it uh, just go back and see that react that breaks your heart the way he reacts to it you can feel the character's pain but when bucky dies it's bucky is 
is a huge part of his life and when he dies the reaction that comes out of cap it's very bland and i and i think that i did not like about it should have been more emotional and should have been more there should have been rage there should have been some uh, consequences there should have been some consequences or the way he reacts to that death it could have been really amazing if he, if he would have made some irrational decisions or if he would have uh, mm, yeah i am yeah. as i said the movie is not without its flaws but it's not again a bad movie it does what it has to do it sets up captain america in a mighty uh, super soldier role you are right you are right bucky is like the only only family captain has mm-hmm. and his death was not that uh, not that impactful on the screen yeah the doctor the scientist uh-huh. uh, gets uh, like he invents the super serum uh-huh. super soldier serum uh-huh. Um, so the moment between him and captain america it's, i i like that point of yours that it's it's beautiful he's the only person that it shows the trust between them that yeah. is, that has been like mm. he's choosing the work of his life he's choosing this this guy for it yeah so finding finding him suitable and mm. um steve is uh, giving him the right to do or like like trusting his life mm-hmm. so uh that that small moment between them the talk as you said just before yeah. the night yeah. when he gives him a, a glass of whiskey i guess mm-hmm. and that 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 moment is really really beautiful and it's, yeah. it's, i think uh, now that i think about it it's one of these very underrated moments it's parallel to iron man and jensen in in in, in the first iron man movie how tony stark and jensen impact each other and how jensen is the driving force behind tony stark becoming iron man so i think the same year the scientist he is the reason why captain america stays good because he made that promise. Yeah. Maybe he has he sacrificed everything for his country. Mm. Like even when he's a strong scrawny guy he hasn't had much luck with girls. Mm. And when he finally gets to have a date he has to leave her yeah. because of because of his other responsibilities. So it's yeah. kind of really sad when you think about it. Yeah. But that's what that's what Captain America has all about sacrifices you make for your yeah. country. Yeah. If it would have happened Uh, Steve Rogers and Peggy Carter would have been a really really good couple. They had the chemistry, they had reasons to be with each other, and they had the understanding of who the other person is. And I think it would have been a really good romantic relationship that would have that would have come on stage, but I think it is the the whole will they won't they will they won't they dynamic really helped Captain America as a character to grow and become this this icon that was also something that the first avengers did right really it, it it's one of those very good things that you that you can't have yeah this this perfect thing that you just can't have mm. it's one of those things yeah i think the time has come to talk about one of the best movies of mcu uh, the winter soldier oh okay. yeah let me tell you something about winter soldier like how i approached winter soldier when i came to know that a movie called captain america the winter soldier is coming out my first reaction was it's going to be baki that's that's what i said that's what i said <laughs> uh the whole the whole thing that they did with oh who is this guy the the mask and all that's like that's baki i know that because i have read but um and i i again it was like i wasn't impressed with the character yet at the point i went to watch this film and i remember very well i i went to watch this film with 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 a girl who um well basically i wasn't i was that much into her, into that movie at the time because of that so uh, <laughs> i i i went into the movie half uh, half hearted uh, not much interested in movie and interested in other activity but the the moment captain america lands on that ship starts taking out those guys i was like what the <laughs> hell this is a different different cap that kick oh my god i can watch that kick like 10 times a day and be satisfied every time oh my god that kick and you know which kick i'm talking right this this guy yeah, falls off the I board know. Oh god that is so beautiful and i was like what what is this <laughs> this is this is this is a different cap and i want to see you what he does like, hold on now just one second let me let me ask this <laughs> yeah i mean it 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 did become like that cuz um i remember when, i mean this is this is going a little off track but i remember uh, the theater being really cold and me being the guy i was supposed to offer up my jacket and i was so engrossed in the movie that even though i was told 
twice surprised that I'm feeling cold. I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And I kept watching the film. So basically what I'm trying to say is that I love that movie. It's an amazing film. Any complaints that I had about Captain America and the entire characters that surround him, gone. Captain America is one of my favorite characters. And uh, even, even, if he, like, even if he wasn't, the, actually Winter Soldier is, is like a, a template of how you should make superhero movies. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. Because, uh, because of a lot of things. Um, firstly, there is no generic villain in it, like, like this big, powerful villain. Oh, yeah. Per se. It, is, it, it works so fine. The reason that's one of the, one of the best MCU movies and one of the best superhero movies ever made is they, they took a storyline, like there was, so when it was revealed in the comics that it's, uh, the Winter Soldier is actually Bucky, it's, it's a big twist. Yeah. You don't see it coming. Yeah. And like, whoa, shit, I, I didn't expect that. So that's, that's what the, that's what the feeling is. Mm-hmm. But as you said, everybody knew that it was going to be Bucky, right? Yeah. Everybody knew it. Yeah. Still, they made it so interesting, beautiful. Now that we're talking about Winter Soldier, I want to talk about the different Captain America that we saw in both these films. So, um, as, as I told you, I was talking about this, this, these parallel scenes that are there in both the movies, very similar scenes, but they're a little different. So, uh, if you go back in uh, the first Avengers, you see uh, Captain America on on his bike, and he approaches uh, Red Skull's base, right? And there are these uh, bikers that are chasing. So he uses these different gadgets, you know, to take them out. He uses fire that comes out of his exhaust pipe. the string where they very com in a comical way they fall down because of the string and then the parallel scene begins where he's riding his bike and this tank approaches him and coming to winter soldier when he's escaping the shield headquarters he is he's escaping on his bike and this a plane yeah. approaches so and the difference between the two captain america is very very clear and i think there is an explanation to it as to why i'll get into it but uh, the, the difference is, in the first Avengers, he dodges the bullets that are coming out of the, the cannon. The way he tackles that tank is that he just pushes a button and these huge ass guns come out of his bike and they, they just blow the tank. So basically over there we see Captain America depending on technology and his uh, gadgets and props. But then right. we come to Winter Soldier where he is on a similar situation where he's facing a fucking plane and the plane is firing at him. He dodges those planes. He has no other option. He has to dodge them and then he throws his shield in there, jumps up, gets on the helicarrier, uses his agility, uses his fighting skills, uses his strength, uses his uh, brains for a change to take that helicarrier down. It's, it's not a helicarrier, it's a, it's a plane. He takes, takes it down with his abilities, not technology. And for me, that was a birth of a new Captain America. That was, this is, and I said, this, this, this is cool. This guy is cool. Plus, he gets a cool superhero landing after that. I mean, we can, we can go on and on about the amazing yeah. action scenes in Winter Soldier. I mean, damn, those are some good scenes. It's, it's a mixture of agility, speed, and power in those scenes, they are just so beautifully yeah. choreographed. I think they are one of the best hand-to-hand combat scenes 
in yeah. the whole of MCU. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I agree. And I think uh, what, uh, the the reason why there is such a shift in character's fighting style, um, for me, the only logical explanation can be that Captain America, after he comes out of ice, he has a lot of free time and he, I think, is trying to learn new fighting styles, keeping up with the world. Um, he's learning different martial arts and MMA, I guess, I don't know. So, so I think that is the reason why we see a different version that really connects with us as this generation, where we see him taking up fighting styles of our generation. In, in all ways, as you said, in, in, in the terms of fighting style, in the terms of... Uh, helicopter, the way that he tackles that doctor. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have done a great job in bringing the characters in, of the of the World War era mm-hmm. to this modern world. Yeah. And the change in in everything is, is really mm-hmm. uh, amazing. And they, one of the important things is that, as I said, it was right and wrong. It, it was so clear he was fighting the enemy that in the war, in, yeah. you know, you have to kill this guy, the enemy, right? It, it's very clear. But in, in Winter Soldier, it's it's much more complicated than that. Yeah. You have to fight your own, it's an internal war that's going mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. I think that, that, that fight, that internal fight that you're referring to, that makes Winter Soldier great. Because I think it's not just Steve Rogers who's going through this internal fight. But I think even Black Widow goes through it. Uh, because she when she realizes that S.H.I.E.L.D. has been corrupted for years, she is fighting with herself it's like what i have done did i do it for shield did i do it for hydra what am i like she questions it the same thing with bucky even he he tries i mean the the best that he could he tries and he he tries to say that i knew that guy but i knew that guy and you can feel that pain in him when he says that but i knew that guy yeah that that fight in him so I think uh, Captain America, more than just an action film, it has a lot of uh, drama in it. And I think people, uh, it gets overshadowed by the amazing action, of course. But if you just sit down and really try to understand all the things that the characters are going through, even with Sam Wilson, he, is, um, he talks initially in the film, he talks about uh, the bed that he sleeps on in, in the modern world and how it's, it's not a good thing for him because he slept on rocks uh, when he was doing tours. So, uh, so again, there's a fight. So there is a lot of lot of drama that goes on into uh, during Winter Soldier, and I think people probably noticed it, didn't notice it. I don't know. Initially, I I didn't notice the drama. I was just focused on the action. But yeah, it's it's, it's a beautiful film, and Joanna Anthony Russo did an amazing job. I'm eternally thankful that these two people were born. They took MC to to a whole different level. I know, I know, I agree. I agree. I agree. It's, I think their work is like, uh, like there are a few things which are in, is replaceable in history and mm. their, their movies are one of, one of those. Yeah. Um, you, they just have that, you know, uh, Joe and Anthony Russo's touch is like, it's like a Midas touch. When they touch a character, it just becomes golden. You know, I, I, I and this is what something that I would get to in the future episodes about how uh, the characters have touched every character. Every character that these two have touched have become brilliant. They did the same thing with Iron Man in Civil War. They did the same thing with Thor in Infinity Wars. Yeah, truly the best. Yeah, truly the best. Yeah. No doubt about it. Uh, let me ask you something. Hmm. What do you think about uh, like who? Who do you think is right? Was Fury right in making those handicappers or? Do you think Cap is right saying that uh, if this is not freedom, this is fear, you know, this is this is not good, so mm-hmm. what you're doing over here? So w- what do you think? I think I think both of them, like as I said, these characters uh, suddenly become so uh, complex in in Winter Soldier, not just in Winter Soldier, but in the back movie, in the uh, past movies too. But uh, these characters are so complex because you know the places that they come from. Because uh, Fury, he he's a spy. Uh, as we learned a little bit more about him in Captain Marvel, he has seen a lot of people lie to him. person that he thought was his friend, Alexander Pierce, turned out to be Hydra. So he always has had this trust issue. And he talks about his grandfather in, in the elevator with Cap. His grandfather used to walk down the neighborhood and people used to try and mug him. So he kept a gun with him. So he says something that really sums up Nick Fury in that one sentence. That he says that my granddad liked people 
but he never trusted them <laughs> yeah so i think that is the the character definition of nick fury he likes people but he doesn't trust them but whereas with steve rogers we all know he's an optimistic guy he thinks that everybody can be saved everything can be saved but he knows the truth of war obviously he also knows that but he has to be optimistic a soldier has to be optimistic that the guy next to you is not going to die if he dies you accept it you mourn it and you move on but you have to be optimistic so when he says that this is not freedom this is fear i think gap is extremely and perfectly right in his way and nick fury making these helicarriers is right in his way things go south and that is why cap turns out to be right but if things wouldn't have gone wrong if nick fury's intentions were carried out into actions to the t i think both of them wouldn't have been neither wrong or the right for me it it's that way yeah even for me because uh, it's hard to prove that what he is doing is wrong because his point of view is a, is a soldier's point of view right yeah there's an enemy you have to kill it that's your mission mm-hmm. done but that's the fury's job just to kill the enemy yeah. he has to think a step ahead he has to think of the strategy exactly. for the future mm-hmm. and he has to prepare for for those threats and mm. why wouldn't he prepare in the best way possible he says shield takes the world as it is not how we would like it to be mm-hmm. and that's what sums up his point of view i yeah. mean picking up a gun is bad it's not going to save you from the mud from the mud right? yeah. yeah you have to pick you have to keep the gun with you yeah like, you use it, don't use it it's up to you mm. but um, steve has seen i think in his life the consequences of power in the bad hands mm mm-hmm. when the power gets to the bad hands how, yeah. how it is used and what are the consequences i think mm-hmm. he has seen that and he doesn't want it to happen again so even he is right and is on in his place can't argue with him i know i know i get that's what, that's what that's what makes this movie excellent is that that's what i love about mcu is that they have two sides to a character the yeah, soldier i think was a milestone in telling us the audience or the fans that we are not going to have square characters anymore yeah and it's it's more than and see it's it's the russo brother yeah. they just make these these movies seem like they are just action packed mm. you know super comic yeah. so larger than life super movies but in in reality they are so so thought provoking coming back to captain yeah. america he does uh, in in civil war again he does a few flawed things he tries to lie in the film he tries to defy orders in the film he tries to run away he try he uh, i mean he does a lot of um illegal things i would say and morally wrong things not a lot more a lot of them morally wrong but he does he steals a car even and tries to justify it as borrowing uh-huh. yeah. but then you know he he has done some bad things and I, that, and i like that they made him flawed they let him make mistakes and they let him rectify it so i guess as a character he still is evolving uh, into a layered character is not still the most layered character but he he has started having those layers i like that he's in the winter soldier i think that is when it's starting to happen to him he's like the the extent to which he goes to do what what he believes is right he mm-hmm. just he's just pushing it a bit in winter soldier he pushes it too far in in civil war yeah. so that that is uh, in in winter soldier his character is growing and and that yeah is, exactly you know. the layers are growing and what I, that is what i like about it. and i think another thing uh, uh, another person who has this impact on him i think is black widow she has a really interesting way of putting things for rogers is that he asks who are you and he she says what do you want me to be he says uh, a friend and she says you are in the wrong business The truth is a matter of circumstance. It's not all things to all people all the time. Neither am I. It's a tough way to live. It's a good way not to die though. You know, it's kind of hard to trust someone when you don't know who that someone really is. Yeah. Who do you want me to be? How about a friend? there's a chance you might be in the wrong business Rogers that that i think uh, for a character like steve rogers who who is so optimistic and who uh, who values human life for somebody like steve rogers to hear that is is it's a hard pill to swallow 
but then his friend shows up he says that i cannot give up on this person and that is what i think is really complex about this character is that he's trying to come to terms with the modern world but then his past comes back it's a bit contradictory making steve think about what's right and wrong what what do you do when you're when the enemy is your friend right mm-hmm. what do you do yeah and you are the person who as i said who is who symbolizing america you have to do the right thing no matter what yeah. it's, it's such a it's such it tears you apart mm. and that that is the process that steve is going through in which a soldier yeah. doesn't know what to do and uh, even falcon says that he's the, he's the kind that you don't try to talk you try to stop stop yeah. the guy yeah so that that's really good but what I, the contradiction i'm saying is nicholas fury tells him mm. that uh, creating all these high characters he doesn't trust people with mm. that kind of power right mm. but again when <laughs> when it it's his friend he he shows belief in his friend yeah that is also one of one of his flaws like um, mm. he even in the speech that he gives in the sheet in the yeah. yeah 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 he says i believe in people individuals mm. right but really does he because previously he didn't he didn't trust nick fury with it he said mm. he knew that somebody else was going to have this power mm. and use it against like use it against innocent people in the world not use it in the right way mm. so so it's a bit it's a bit contradicting and about steve supporting bucky mm-hmm. yeah he he had to i mean he was the only family that steve ever had yeah. no matter what happens like family is family you you've got to give them a chance no matter what happens yeah but then you don't think, but then you can't be the righteous character then he's not perfect that that's what we're learning here he's not perfect and yeah. it's the shades of it this is the shades of it this is all like being up to in civil war the way he is up against uh, everything and this is just the shades of it and uh, everything about him is so symbolic Mm. in the in the end scene where uh, he's just shooting him and he's trying to try to do the right thing right so he, yeah he say like, i'm not going to hurt you i'm not going to kill you but you want to stop me from doing the doing the right, right thing. thing yeah even even the captain america shield is is such a great symbol for him it's like a uh, symbolic of protection he he's he's like a shield to the nation mm. it's not an offensive weapon to be used it's just for your self defense yeah. right and he, it can be used to get hurt but it's just like practically immovable like even mm. if, even in thor bangs on it with his powerful hammer one mm. of the most powerful things in the universe it doesn't move that much like it doesn't mm. tap it thrown away mm. right so it's practically immovable so it, it also shows that it's what captain america stands for he stands for what he believes in and, and nobody can move him from his place Mm. so uh, in the end when the winter soldier is shooting him that that was also a, a very well written well thought of uh, scene i think the reason why it took so long for us to discuss these two movies because i think uh, they are really important in setting up first uh, captain america as a soldier and then uh, the second one sets him up as not just a soldier but a human being who has real human connections with people I think we should put this discussion to rest right now and we'll get back to the second part with uh, everything including civil war and including uh, all the other films that he has been a part of. So um I think we should stop now and we can talk about it in the next one. Yeah, so there are so many more things to talk about uh, as it is that there were so many things to talk about in these mm. movies itself. Yeah. So we'll we continue this discussion I hope you guys like uh, this discussion that we love this kind of healthy to and fro discussions about these yeah. deep movies mm. so hope you guys like please let us know in the comments your thoughts about the things you disagreed on the things you didn't like and things you thought that you were right on we will be yeah, definitely look forward to the comments and we will see you in the, see next, you in the one. next one and uh, like subscribe and share if you like these discussions thanks for listening and see you in the next one